Josh, we have Fred joining us today. Um, I don't have a funny quip or anything to start <laughs> other than I'm just I'm just taking in what's happening right now. I, I, it's one of those things where when you've been staring at Bitcoin for years on end, you almost grow desensitized in a way to the emotions. And when things start happening, like for us, our third bull market in, you, 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 you really felt it, like logically and objectively it was going to happen. But yeah. there, is a, there is a sense of disbelief, too, when it starts happening. And I just have the, the bullish hairs on the back of my neck are, are starting, to, starting to tingle, and the, the math is really supportive. Uh, there's a lot of firepower behind that logic. I don't know how the two of you are feeling, but it's, there, there's a lot to unpack today. No doubt about it. Every single time this happens, and like you said, this is our third go-around for this, it, it's unbelievable to watch the price action just, just surprise you to the upside over and over again. The degree. I mean, I think you guys, Fred, you you commented on Gareth. I think is it Soloway who's been shorting yeah. Bitcoin since thirty five thousand. That yeah. is, <laughs> I, I love watching these guys step in front of a freight train and just get obliterated. It's yeah. uh, I, you just don't do that, man. Like you you can play, you can play in a lot of train tracks, but when this thing's barreling down on you, you don't you don't step on the tracks. You will get murdered. Definitely, you would definitely get murdered. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't feel like the lights were that far off either. I mean, it, it in a sense, it just there's an obviousness to the march forward of Bitcoin, especially with how early we are in adoption. Like when things get when the market gets more saturated and understanding grows and and the big players are really fully situated, it'll feel different. But it's just so obvious that we're incredibly early in an asset class that's had so much success, has an obvious value proposition, and nothing's hindering that. Um, but yeah, when it starts marching forward, it gets crazy. Fred, well, I will, I will give you the I'll give you the opposite to that. Please do, bit, please yeah. do. Yeah, we want that. I mean, we we invite I can that. I introduce we, myself and stuff first. And yeah, then we can hear. But before we get too freakishly bullish here off the bat, introduce yourself. Tell our sure. audience who you are, what you do, how you found Bitcoin. Sure. So you know, I kind of have a, I you know, I have a super quantitative. Uh, background, right? So I got a PhD in math and kind of joint between math and computer science and statistics, really, in uh, at Stanford, right? And, um, and then I went to work on Wall Street, right? So I was one of the first quants on Wall Street. And, and I was work, I actually worked on the bond arbitrage desk okay. of, uh, of Solomon Brothers, which was the power, the epicenter of power within within this the most powerful trading firm on wall street so i was at i was in that 10 person desk and we managed Bell, the belly of the beast as we say belly yeah, well, of the beast right what kind and of so, satanic rituals went on there <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know there was there was definitely some strippers on the trading floor if that's what you nice. want to call it satanic ritual uh, wait, as a quick anecdote we cracked jokes here about midgets being thrown at targets this is maybe yeah. a month month and a half ago and we got some legit flack we got an angry email a listener that was very frustrated that we would uh offend the midget community so formal apology josh yeah. uh officially going on air we apologize to our midget listenership and the midget community for well the i mean look, we, i think they want to be called dwarves dan Sorry, I, mean, I, I gotta that. tell you, Wall Street in my era was just the exact opposite of politically correct. I mean, you know, it was it was the most testosterone filled, probably similar to your field, yeah. actually. You know, but it, it, it's uh, you know, it's, it's very kind of young, young guys thinking that they're all you know all smarter and cockier than the next guy. With a lot and of money in their pocket to do a lot, a lot of cool lot of money shit. in their pockets, and they're you know they're it was really a kind of a take no prisoners kind of, you know, Gordon Gecko kind of world, right? You know, sort of like nice guy, fuck you, you know? Yeah. That, that was sort of the, that really, all those movies are, are an approximation to actually what it was. And, you know. What were the years was, you were on that desk? Roughly. I was on that desk and, you know, and so, you know, and I kind of was this, you know, this sort of conehead, um, you know, conehead quant smart math guy but solomon kind of made its it really made its and actually the guy from was from chicago john merriweather right who who really kind of did this a chicago guy 
really kind of street smart Chicago guy, not a math guy, but he was so smart that he knew he better got some better get some math guys. Mm. So he went shopping and he basically started getting the the smartest guys at MIT and then Stanford. And I kind of was part of that Stanford crew, right? Who came in the, you know, late eighties and uh, you know, and so, and basically we're just given free reign, you know, just, just make, do, just do whatever you want. Don't lose money and make a lot of it and take a lot of risk. And yeah. that's kind of what, so that was just an amazing education. <laughs> you know, it's probably like your first week as a, you know, on, on the firefighting force. Yeah, it's trial really, by fire. Yeah, trial mm -hmm. by fire. They just throw you in there and you just learn, right? Yeah. Yep. And you learn at you learn at you know really fast. Otherwise, you're out. You know, you, there's there's no real like, hey, uh, I have a question. You know, like no. So now in that context, if yeah. you fuck up big enough early, right? Obviously, yeah. you were in crazy intelligent and had a background for this and an aptitude for it. But you you yeah. are incentivized in a lot of ways to stick your neck out and take risk. Yeah. Is there an element of luck there? Like, were there people, were there casualties of those that, you know, had a sound thought process, stepped in front of traffic on accident, I, I, made I a lost huge a million dollars my first, I lost the firm a million dollars my first day of trading. <laughs> and they were chill? They were yeah, like, all right, oh, they were. I, I came in and I was like, well, sir, we have a little bit of a problem, sir. And they're like, okay, Fred, <laughs> how, how bad did we go down? Sir. I'm like, uh, <laughs> About a million bucks, sir. <laughs> and, you know, and they're like, and they're like, good. I'm glad you learned it this early. Good. Yeah. And then okay. they're like, don't, don't make it happen again. Yeah. Here's some cocaine. Yeah. Make sure you don't fuck and this I was up like, again. Whoa. Yeah, he gave me another shot. Great. I'm <laughs> so it was actually a great, great lesson um, to actually, you know, drop some money. Because, you know, you get too cocky otherwise, you know. So it was actually, a, it was pretty good to kind of, take some, you know, take some stuff early. Um, but then I, I made a ton of money for the firm. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, we, we made a lot of money, the firm made a lot of money. Uh, and, uh, I did that for six years, which, you know, six years, a lot, you know, like prop trading, it, it, yeah. you know, it burns you out, you know what I mean? Very high stress. And, and so, I just decided in uh, in the early '90s that I wanted to do something completely different, and so I went. I started a software company with my brother, and uh, I sold it for uh, twenty million dollars three years later. And that was the first of ten software. That was the first of ten <laughs> software companies and and internet companies that I did. So I've had ten exits, um, all over ten million dollars. Uh, the total nice. amount of money that I've exited is half a, bill, half a billion dollars. Not bad. So I'm, I'm similar, pretty similar to, what, similar to what Josh and I have done with a uh, side project yeah, like yeah, this yeah. one. And yeah. His, <laughs> yep. So anyways, so that's, that's kind of my, my finance and the tech background. Right. And then I just, you know, I kind of knew some of the, t the crypto guys in LA because I was a tech guy. Everybody knew me in tech, right. In LA. And so I was like, yeah, this crypto thing. I bought some Bitcoin, but I, I thought I had a typical tech pack a view of it. I was like, yeah, Bitcoin is sort of going to be the, uh, it's going to be the MySpace. There's going to be a, there's going to be something much better that's going to come along, you know? Mm, yep. And, and so, you know, I was sort of looking at, okay, you know, uh, maybe it's ETH, maybe it's EOS at the time, right? <laughs> I, uh, I own some of that shit too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, and so I, I sort of said, you know what? Well, maybe I'll just do a, maybe I'll, I'll do a, a startup. I had sort of this other startup that wasn't going anywhere at the time. And I said, maybe I'll just turn this thing into a wallet company. So I built a, I built the leading wallet for EOS and it became this wallet. Became, it's sort of like, you know, there's Solana has this phantom wallet, you know, and everybody uses, I had the, I, I built the wallet that everybody used on EOS and me and my team. Right. And so I learned a lot about apps and EOS and everything else. And, uh, you know, I, I, and actually it was a profitable thing. You know, we, we were able to kind of, we had, we were the first company to have apps inside of apps in the app yeah, store, yeah. kind of like, you know, so that, that was my invention. And so, uh, and Apple was fine with it for a while, for a year. And then they, they basically slammed us. Uh, but you know, I kind of, uh, I kind of, I, I got into Bitcoin really in 2019 you know, 
and uh, not really active on Twitter at all, zero, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, had no real interest in it or any, you know, I just, and there's a lot of people like me, you know, who, who had had careers on wall street and stuff who just, they're nobody's on Twitter. They have no followers and, you know, and I'm starting to meet some of them now, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, Oh my God, you, you traded the long bond at Solomon brothers. Yeah. And you have 400 followers. Oh shit, man. <laughs> you know, like, but that there's guys like that. And, but anyways, when these ETFs came out, I just got super excited, right? Mm. Because yeah. I felt, I felt I knew something that nobody knew, right? Because I felt that the the crypto community, and I'll just use the word crypto in general, right? The bit inclusive of the Bitcoin community, right? They didn't understand or really care for what was happening on Wall Street. They were like, yeah, we got our thing here. We don't need Wall Street, whatever. Wall Street's old, you know, stupid. Um you know, Bitcoin's all about self custody and everything, right? So they were very dismissive of Wall Street, right? Yep. And meanwhile, Wall Street, Wall Street, uh, sorry, Wall Street did not understand uh, what they had with this Bitcoin ETF. You see what I'm saying? They they were like, yeah, we can build an ETF for Bitcoin. You know, we've we've done one for gold, for platinum, you know, for India mid cap funds. Uh, we, you know, we got we got we got one of these ETFs coming out every day this one will be kind of cool, you know? <laughs> so I was like, Oh no, my God, this is going to totally solve the problem that I've seen from the wallet space and looking at the, the, you know, the self custody and everything else. Right. Very, I'm very, very technical. So I was like, this is the solution, right? Mm. This is going to open this up to literally tens of millions of people. Right. Yeah. And because if you look at somebody right now and you say, great, uh, I want you to go, go get some Bitcoin. Great. What do I have to do? Well, here, I want you to take this, go to this, da- download the edge wallet, right? Write down these things. Okay. Now you need to get Bitcoin. Okay. Now you need to go to Coinbase, KYC, you know, move around your head, biometrics, uh, yeah. passport, uh, like all it's, this it, stuff. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. Right. Now contrast that with a guy who already has their, uh, Schwab account and you say, Hey, see, there's the, this thing, IBIT. Great. Click buy <laughs> 200 yeah. shares. Bump, bump, bump. You know, that's it. So you've reduced the thing from two weeks and an enormous hassle and something that most people have no interest in doing to something that's like three clicks. Yeah. And whenever you do that, you get mass adoption. So I knew that this ETF was going to be a success. And I knew that the Wall Street was also underestimating how big of a success it was going to be because they had absolutely no idea of what the Bitcoiner community was like. Um, they have no idea of like what makes Bitcoin special at all, you know? Um, and they're just like, yeah, we're doing Bitcoin this week. Uh, t- next week, it'll be AI and, you know. It, yeah, they, 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 didn't, they didn't realize what they stumbled into. Is kind of what they you're did saying. Not, they no still way. don't. They still don't. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'd say some people do, right? But they're starting to because this is like the best ETF <laughs> launch ever in history. So when that came out, I just kind of made a video like you've seen. I'm just like, hey, this is me. I don't have a microphone. Let me explain, guys, what's going on and what's about to go on in the next month. Yeah. I know you don't believe me. You've never seen me. But let me tell you. I fucking know. I'm sorry. I have my French, but I know Wall Street. We, we encourage as many words as possible. We want I'm, the I'm telling you, up. Yep. I'm telling you guys what's about to happen. And you can believe me. You cannot believe me. Just watch. And and I, I guarantee you this stuff's going to work. Yeah. And everybody is like, nah, it's not going to work, Fred. There's not going to be any demand. You know, it's, you know, this, this, we don't really need the wall. We don't wall street is very skeptical about Bitcoin. Bitcoin's at 30,000. It's not going to go any higher. Like I was like, guys, like I, I've been around the block too. I understand, <laughs> but I'm telling you everything, you know, all your models, everything are all going to throw them out the window because what's happening now is a new world. It's different from the 2020, 2021 bull market. That's nothing to do with that. And I was there every inch of that market okay i was there every inch of the 2017 bill market it has nothing to do with that right this is a completely different animal and yeah. um 
And I still I think, think it's, you, it's a completely you, different animal. I think you make a really uh, apt observation about the frictions of self-custody. You can kind of go back and forth. In one sense, it is doable for virtually anyone. Okay, but doable is a fickle term. And what feels simple to somebody that's repeated something a lot, practiced it a lot, is in a community that celebrates it. What seems simple to them isn't necessarily simple to other people. I think I've Bitcoin 2024 is moving to the heart of Bitcoin country, Nashville. Nashville just feels like the proper place for a Bitcoin conference. I can't guarantee we will be on main stage or side stage or even performing a puppet show. I can, however, say that we will be hanging out with the plebs, and if we have no obligations, we will very likely be getting drunk. Bitcoin Magazine is introducing a new event this spring, Bitcoin Asia. It's shaping up to be an unmissable experience. Stay tuned for more info. Whether you want to visit Bitcoin Asia or Bitcoin 2024 in Nashville, we have a coupon code for you. Use coupon code BCB for 10% off any ticket to either event. That's code BCB. I would say it's super, you're, you're absolutely correct. It's not simple, even though a lot of people say how hard it can be, I write 12 words down, right? It's one thing if, you know, you're a college kid and you got a little bit of Bitcoin, you wrote your 12 words down, you put them in your, you put them in your one password, okay? That's one thing, right? Now, if you're, you know, a 45-year-old or a 55-year-old and you got a family and you got kids and, you know, this represents, you know, the culmination of 20 years of work, you know, right. Yeah. you know, are you going to like trust your kid's education to these 12 words? You know, how, how well do you really understand the security of the, you know, the possibility that a key logger was not installed on your computer? You know, how, 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 how well do you really understand hardware wallets or do you trust them? You know, yeah. and you're going to make a backup of the key phrase. Are you going to copy down exactly all those 24 words? Are you going to switch one because you're kind of careful? You're worried that somebody's going to get one of those 24 words and that just going to get that plate. And they're just going to be, well, they got your stuff. So it's very, very, <laughs> very, very complicated. Yeah. Right. And multi-sig is actually much more complicated. <laughs> right. So, For sure. you know, so yep. single sig already is enough to like just dissuade most people. Now, when you get into sort of high net worth type things, you're going to use multi-sig and we're talking order of magnitude more complicated. I happen to love uh, multi-sig and, you know, I would say if somebody, if somebody is absolutely ready to do their own custody, I would recommend, Hey, go to my friends at Casa. You know, it's a, it's a great, great uh, solution for, you know, sort of the multi-sig the whole process, right? They've built all this stuff. Unchained, also excellent. I, I've used Unchained. I'm not an Unchained customer right now. I'm just very happy with Casa. Swan's yeah. got a good a, a product that I haven't really, I can't vouch for it because I haven't used it, but you know, Swan's an excellent team. So there are options now that'll, that'll help you custody, you know, Bitcoin, and it'll help you as a, you know, sort of responsible adult, you know, in your, that, you know, not, not the college age, age adult, but, you know, middle-aged adult um, that'll help you custody yep. your things. Now, with all that said, <laughs> you know, I'm telling my friends who are my age or even your age, right? I'm saying, and they're interested in buying Bitcoin. So I'm just to buy the ETF, okay? Why? Because for the time it's going to take you to understand all this custody and everything you know, that may, t that may be three months from now, you know, and I, I don't have time to give you lessons on custody and wallets and, and everything else, you know, and, you know, how to move things and what a Bitcoin address is and what the difference between a taproot address and, right. and, and a SegWit address is. I don't have time for all that. And, and, you know, and, you know, you could read seven books on this, but like, what are you in it for? You're in it because you want to put some of your investment in it. Great. ETF solves that problem. You know, so yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I I agree, especially for the older cohort of people who are intimidated by this, or you know, just haven't don't they just don't feel that they are responsible enough to maintain those words or produce those words in a safe right. way. So both sure. are good. Both are good. Both are absolutely good. But you know, this is sort of the the this is the easy peasy uh, you know Bitcoin for dummies, as I would say. Yep. You know, uh, 
And most people like the Bitcoin for dummies. We're in a sort of that. That's our that's our yeah. situation. So that that's kind of why these things are going to work, you know, and that's why they are working. You had this great post on reflexivity the other day. And the yeah. the basic idea is that the ideas or the, the the visual that someone has on an asset changes as the asset rises in value. And there's a feedback loop that kind of mm -hmm. reinforces itself. And that's why we see these massive run ups in all kinds of different um, assets, but specifically uh, Bitcoin. How does this ETF affect this reflexivity these days uh, with the ETF availability? The way I think the ETF works is you've got a, you've got a bunch of sort of, I would call them passive <laughs> investors, right? So there's a lot of people, they don't really have a, they're not trying to flip Bitcoin. They're not trying to, and they aren't trying to put the majority of their money in Bitcoin, right? They're just talking about putting somewhere between one to 5% of their net worth in Bitcoin, right? And you know what? They like the Bitcoin story. They like the, and, and that, that includes the origin story. That includes the 21 million. That includes everything, right? They kind of like the story. They don't have time to really understand much further than that, right? But they're like, yeah, sounds good. Uh, I'm going to put some money there. And I don't really, you know, just wake me up and let me, let me, in, in a quarter, I'll take a look and see how it's doing, right? So you get this sort of passive uh, investing strategy. And that's, you know, so popular in America now, right? Most investing is that, you know, it's just like, I don't understand stocks. I'm just going to buy the yes. S&P 500, yep. right? So that's kind of your, that's your, the, and by the way, that wasn't the way, and during my time on Wall Street, that was not, that was not the norm, right? That is a new thing, right? Uh, you know, people think, well, that's always been the case. Not at all. You know, in my day, it was always like, you got to be a good stock picker, you know, like, you know, like the, you, you need this great stock picker. What did EF Hutton say? Well, EF Hutton's saying this, I got to listen. You know, it's like, it was all about stock picking and everything that that's all dead now. Um, and everybody's kind of gone into this mantra of investing and passive thing. So once something becomes a quote unquote asset class, right? Basically, people just want to own a little bit of it, and they just want to be diversified. So you've got all these people now trying to buy a little bit of Bitcoin. Why? Because it's good to own a little bit of Bitcoin. They kind of like the story, right? So now they're going to buy it through this ETF. <laughs> and now the ETF is going to come in, and it's going to go, great. Now, okay, we got, we're, we got $500 million in new money today you know, that, that we need for tomorrow. Okay, here's the $500 million. Go buy us some Bitcoin. And that's every single day now, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so now the price of Bitcoin goes up. So guess what happens to these people? They start hearing Bitcoin more on CNBC and they're like, honey, remember that Bitcoin thing we were talking about? Uh, yeah, there's Joe Kernan is kind of saying it's going up and he, he seems to really like it. You know, Andrew Ross Sarkin doesn't seem to like it, but Kernan, that, I like that Kernan guy, you know? So... We maybe we should. This is the fourth time I'm hearing it. And I hear it's getting close to the all time high. Why don't we get in? And so you get this feedback loop that's happening, right? And it, it, and especially now, we've never seen this thing. We've never seen an asset like this where there's absolute fixed supply, right? You know. So normally, if you have something like, let's say, people want to buy Netscape stock or something, and Netscape stock goes up, there's a board meeting. Netscape decides to issue more shares. You know what I mean? Or yep. they decide to buy some company with the shares, right? Here, there's just like, there's no board meeting of Bitcoin to, to get, yeah. get more things. And so, you know, if you look at how much supply is out there, um, and, you know, we can quantify it. We can look because we know how much is on exchanges, right? And we know there's like 1.8 million Bitcoin that's sitting on exchanges right now. Yep. Okay. Well, there's... Right now, today, there's 10,000 Bitcoin a day being absorbed by Wall Street. What that tells you is 180 days worth of supply, period. Yeah. Period. That's it. Okay. So basically, in 90 days, they're going to have exhausted <laughs> the supply. Right. So, you know, it, it, it really is going to be this, this like, oh, my God, we need some more Bitcoin. Can you call somebody? No, we can't. There is no more Bitcoin. You know, and so I think, you know, this is what uh, 
you know, mathematicians, they call a, a hyperbolic function, right? It's sort of like a parabolic function, but as if you look at the function one over X, right? As X gets smaller and smaller, one over X goes to infinity, right? That's a hyperbolic function. So, you know, we could get in this thing where the price just goes absolutely nonsensical high simply because on one hand, you've got all these people saying, yeah, I'd like a little bit more of this ETF called iBit. And on the other hand, in order to produce that ETF called iBit, they need to go, somehow go find this, these BTCs somewhere in somebody's wallet like yours or mine. Right? Correct. Yeah. And we're like sitting there going, uh, no, we're actually, we're pretty good. You know, we, yeah. uh, we're pretty good. We bought in uh, 2018 and, you know, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of, we're kind of cool, you know, keep on, uh, just keep on bidding it up, you know? And so that's what I think we're, we're into. We're into this kind of absolute thing. And I don't think it really has dawned on people exactly what that means, but I think it's going to, I think if you look at that ratio, I said, right. The 1.8 divided by the 10, right. You, you see, it has to, it has to occur in 2024, right. Right. We are going to hit a crunch in 2024, and it has nothing to do with the happening, right? It's just like you've got all these people looking for supply right now, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you could sort of say, well, you know, we had the initial guys looking for supply, and then that's over. But not, not at all, right? Not at all. Like the, the people right now who have bought represent a very small percentage of people who have brokerage accounts. Most sure. people who have brokerage accounts have not bought any ETFs at all, right? Most advisors are still studying ETFs. Exactly. The, they're yep. still studying it to decide whether they're going to even recommend it to their clients. So we are in a classic situation where we could have, you know, a, we could have a, 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 a supply shock of, of epic proportions, right? epic proportions and you can just throw any rule out the window, any chart out the, nothing matters anymore. Because if you have something like this, the only thing that matters is how much do the customers want? And uh, uh, Satoshi kind of created this like loop, right? Where he didn't foresee that everybody could just get a wallet and do it via ETF, right? He thought, well, people are going to have to get a wallet. They're going to have to do this. Yeah. They may have to go into the command line on Windows. and He didn't foresee this ease of demand. Yeah. Right. He didn't see like this zero friction. And, and you know, honestly, I didn't either. If you asked me like in 2022, I would have said, well, you know, uh, I believe in Bitcoin. We are early. But, geez, that's going to take – I don't know what it's going to do. I don't know how I can ever get – some of my wall street buddies to ever buy into this because it just feels, uh, it feels too difficult. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So, uh, I think, I think this is the solution that I, I really kind of wasn't expecting it to happen. And, and then when it did, then when it was going to clear, clear that it was going to happen, I was like, Oh my God, this is going to totally change everything. I'm so much more bullish than I was. Now, I'm, I'm saying that I, I, it's not like I just bought Bitcoin two months ago either. You know, I've had Bitcoin right. for years, right? So I'm bullish, but kind of like everybody else, I didn't want to get too aggressive. You know? Yeah, get, there's always, bullish, a, you know? always a cautiousness, you know? Like, yeah. it, but it, I, it, I threw cautiousness to the wind. When, when I saw this ETF, that's when I said, no, I'm no longer, <laughs> I have no caution whatsoever anymore. I'm like, this, this thing's going to go up and I'm willing to get on TV or whatever. And I'm willing to say to people, just mark my words. I'm Fred Krueger. This thing's going up. You can, you can, you can cash that check. <laughs> I, I really felt it, you know? Yeah. And, and you don't feel that that much, but like, I just kind of, I, mean, I just felt it because, because of this kind of unique, unique background that I had versus a lot of other people. And, you know, and then I talked now to, I met, you know, <clears throat> Eric from Bloomberg and, you know, on the ETF side and I've, you know, talked to some of these guys. And, uh, and I kind of, uh, they're like, what are we missing? <laughs> and I'm like, you don't understand from our perspective, you know, as Bitcoiners, you just don't get what we see in this thing. You know what I mean? 
Like sure. they're like, well, what happened to where, where's your 60 40 portfolio? And I'm like, we don't care about that guys. You know? Yeah. Like, this is a different culture. This is a different community. It's a you different have a, culture and you have a, a level of a solidity in the, in the base of, of who owns this. And I understand that that can evaporate and eventually people want to take profits, but I think that's, that's something else that's unprecedented is how strongly uh, solidified the concrete is below this. This this didn't come into play two years ago. It's 15 years old, and there's a lot of people that are deeply entrenched in whatever a community means, uh, a, a, a thesis, a mindset, a vision for the future of what money should look like. And back to your point, people, people are not going to let go of this easily. I mean, there's a lot of Bitcoiners that are sitting around going, until there's a seventh figure in front of it, don't talk to me. I mean, that, that that's that's not that uncommon for people to have that mindset who've been stacking this over the last, yeah, say, and I think, say, say five to seven to years. Have you been paying attention the last few years? If so, you know one thing. Not your keys, not your coins. This is a quaint saying, but it's real. If you're not holding your seed keys, you have a Bitcoin IOU, not Bitcoin. CoinKite is the maker of the cold card Mark IV. This is the industry standard for holding the keys to your Bitcoin. Holding your keys should not be intimidating, and it isn't. The Mark IV makes this an incredibly simple process. You could be a degenerate firefighter and hold your own keys. That's how simple it is. If you want to create a more complex setup, the cold card Mark IV has you covered there as well. You can create a multi-sig using a cold card, a tap signer, and even the upcoming Q1. Speaking of the Q1, if you want to have every bell and whistle and give yourself no boundaries as far as interacting with Bitcoin is concerned, the Q1 is your signing device. CoinKite makes some of the most sought after gear in Bitcoin. The block clock, seed plates, the open dime, and the sats card. Everything you need to secure your Bitcoin. Use code BCB for 5% off the Mark IV. I was talking to my dad uh, just before this and he was like, he goes, he goes, you know, my dad's a banker, right? And so he, or an ex-banker, right? So he's like, he goes, you know, I think you actually might have had an impact on the Bitcoin price. He goes, and I go, well, you know, I might have because I definitely think that I've given confidence to people that maybe their kind of crazy dreams were actually potentially, you know, they weren't so crazy. Yeah. Now, you know, and a lot of people like it's going to a million. And you've heard that, you know, five years ago and stuff. And, you know, I heard it. I heard it really first from Tom Lee in, in person in, uh, in 2019. He's, he's really the guy who convinced me that this was going to, um, this is just is a completely different asset, but you know, I went out and I, and I bought a substantial amount of Bitcoin after that meeting, you know, but still relative to my overall net worth, it was still, you know, it wasn't, enormous number, but it was at 5,000, right? So that started the process. And, uh, and then I just got, I got very, very, very aggressive, you know, after that, you know what I mean? So, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm knee deep in this stuff and, uh, and, you know, and, yeah. uh, I, I'm talking my book, you know, I'm not trying to, I can't make Bitcoin go up or anything, but, you know, I definitely, I think it is going to go up and I think it's, it's also a socio, as you guys say, it's a socioeconomic thing. For sure. I really do think that, you know, this is a little bit about like if you're a landlord in New York in, you know, 1840, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, there's there's all these like people coming in in New York and now you, you happen to own a, you know, a city block that was worthless about, you know, uh, you know, five years earlier, right? Just raw yep. land. And now you're like sitting there going, you know, this block here on, uh, it's not very far from Park Avenue. Maybe it might be worth something. Someday. And I feel like I, I definitely think that, you know, I think a lot of these, a lot of us Bitcoiners are going to become kind of the, uh, you know, the rich, the rich of the next, the next uh, 10, 15 years. I think it'll, I think at 10 years, it's over. I think. I mean, it's over. I think the, the transformation is done. Well, and the I narrative this, shift that seems to happen every four years, it's, it, it's like a step change every four years. You know, we had like NFTs and a bunch of clown stuff going on in 2021. And then now in 2024, we've got the ETFs. In 2017, yep. it was uh, futures markets. Um, maybe in 2028, it'll be something like sovereigns purchasing this for central bank balance sheets. 
And I don't really see how the step change gets much higher than that. You know, that seems like, the I think this boss. is it. This is the step change. Yeah. You, you are watching the revolution in real time. This is it. This is, this is the final step. Actually. Actually, I think this is the end of the four year cycle too. I we're done. We're done. Happening doesn't matter after this. The, the only thing that matters right now is you are, you've got mass adoption. You know, there's 150 million U S stock owners, 150 million, you know, you know, how many people have any kind of substantial amount of money on Coinbase? You know, no maybe idea. a couple million in America. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that you, you get some people, yeah, I own some Bitcoin. Great. How much do you own? Yeah. A hundred bucks on Coinbase. Okay. That's, that's great. You know, I don't care where you are and what neighborhood you are in Chicago. hundred bucks is not going to, you know, you're not retiring on that, right? So, right. you know, if you if you're talking real money, where's the real money right now? It's in real estate and it's in stocks, right? That's where it is. That's where most people have their money, you know. And you know, you just opened up the entire the world's most liquid capital markets to Bitcoin, and it just happened two months ago. You don't have to be any smarter than that. That that's right. it. That's right. the that's the end game right there. That's the end game. You know, sovereigns that they'll come, whatever corporates they'll come it, by the way, by the time they come, it'll already be a million dollars a coin. That's they aren't going to get it to a million. It'll be a million. Why? Because of guys like you and me, because people are going to come in and they're going to go to their Merrill Lynch accounts, which Merrill is going to, is, yeah. is, is, is I saw, but what is yeah. it? Bank of America, Merrill, who yeah. else? Like in the Wells last Fargo. Two, Wells, Wells Fargo. Fargo. Turn, yeah, turn and code owned, here pretty owned, quick. Owned yeah. in part by, uh, you know, uh, Warren Rat Poison uh, uh, <laughs> Buffett, you know. <laughs> so, but they're all in on this stuff and they all want a piece of this. And so, you know, you just got, the product is perfect. ETFs are a perfect product. They're a perfect proxy for this. They are, they, this is going to be the, the most it is going to be the most successful, not just launch of an ETF. It'll be the most successful ETF in the world. We're going to go from the QQQs. The, the dominant ETF is going to be IBIT. That is going to be the number one ETF in America. Mark my words. Mm. Okay. That's going to be it. It's going to own more Bitcoin than it will own more. Bit, it's going to own more Bitcoin than Michael Saylor does in a month. Yeah. Okay. So BlackRock BlackRock is the market, right? BlackRock is the market right now. So, okay. So I, the bullish sentiments I get, and they make an enormous amount of mathematical sense. I mean, it's, it's hard to argue against. It's, it's pretty simple supply and demand here. A couple follow-ups. The first one, we'll start here. You said that you think the halvings don't matter as much. What's your general view on how you fork this? This is going to get. We talked about reflexivity. Obviously, as things roll downhill, they can unwind. You know, as they roll uphill, they can roll down just as fast. Do you think we're going to see 50, 60, 70, 80 percent uh, drawbacks after all time highs again? Or do you think that dynamic is going to change as we move out into the future, Fred? Yeah. So what I think what I think is likely to happen. Is very similar to something that happened to to something like NASDAQ going up till 2000 and then crashing for 10 years or even more extreme <laughs> example is um, the Nikkei Japanese stock market, right? It went from, it went up from uh, 1950. It was at, uh, I just don't have it in my head, but I think it went up 300 times from 1950 to 1990, 300 times. Like it is, like you think the S&P is big. The Nikkei was like that on steroids. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and in the entire country of Japan was just a stock trading entity. Right. And then all of a sudden it stopped. And about a week ago it hit its high that it was in 1990. Right. So, wow. Yeah. So I think, I definitely think we're, we're going to go in the normal way for, financial assets to move is, you know, especially new things like tech or, you know, uh, a new country like 
Japan was essentially a new country after the Second World War, right? Reconstructing after uh, we basically obliterated it, right? We built it up. And, you know, it was the wonder story of the 80s, right? Japan, right? That was, yep. the U.S. was not even, you know, it's like, U.S. didn't matter. Made in Japan, right? But then Japan just flamed out. So do I think Bitcoin will do something like this? Yeah, potentially, right? I mean, you know, I think it's going to, once we've kind of gone through the everybody does, everybody's into Bitcoin, right? So I think we'll get this mass adoption phase where everybody's going to have a little Bitcoin. Everybody's going to get into it. Everybody's going to understand it a little bit. Some of us are going to have it in, 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 in cold wallets and everything. But the story of Bitcoin, right? Right. We have this adoption story where we're at something like <laughs> under one percent of the world is using Bitcoin as its currency, right? And that one percent's going to like fifty percent, right? It's just that's the way tech works. That's the way all these things work, right? Yeah. You know, Facebook when it came out, it was a joke. You know, it's like oh, that's only Harvard kids who use it. Then it was like, ah, eh, that's only college kids who use it. And then it's like. That's actually everybody who uses it, right? And so you see these these things like this, you know, cell phones. Well, we have a video, you know, we have video, sorry, uh, we have um, digital cameras. You know, I bought one of the first digital cameras. I was like, how many of these digital cameras are you going to have? Well, how about one per human? You know what I mean? <laughs> That's yeah. kind of where we are right now, right? So I, I think when you're looking at these kind of exponential growth functions, you're probably going to get to the point where Bitcoin becomes a planetary thing and everybody's got it. Right. And, um, and, you know, eventually it'll become more stable, right. Relative to goods and people start pricing all their goods in Bitcoin, but on the way there, it's just like tech, right. It's just like the internet kept on growing from 2000 to 2010, but tech prices didn't, you know what I mean? So right. I think Bitcoin adoption will always keep on growing, right? But yeah. I don't think the price of Bitcoin, it may have some big air pockets and not just one year, one uh, for every four year air pockets. I think mm -hmm. I think we could have a, a, a four, four to eight year bear market in Bitcoin. I don't think we're about to happen. That's about to happen now at all. And as like a trader, I'm like, you're about to witness. This is, you haven't even seen the, the bull market yet, right? I think I think you might have got just a little whiff of what we're about to have. We're about to enter the biggest bull market in the history of Bitcoin. I think right now. I think you got our dicks really hard, Fred. Really hard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just think that that's where we. I I mean, but this is it. This is the main event, right? You you've got some appetizers. You guys were in on the you know. Yeah. The, the pre-fights, right? There's some nice hors d'oeuvres. They were some really You're, nice hors d'oeuvres. You yeah. had some nice hors d'oeuvres. And now this is the actual, the main center attraction, right? This is, you know, Fraser versus Ali, you know? Right. And you, are, this is this is the main deal, right? This is Wall Street versus Bitcoin. You I've know? noticed myself, I'm getting texts from people that are not normally asking or talking about Bitcoin. It's kind of, everyone has those friends who don't talk about it until the near all-time high. And then suddenly it's on their radar again. Yeah. One thing I've noticed is people are asking this time, when do you think is a good time to sell? They're prepping to sell because they don't want to be left holding the bag again. And what that signals to me is the maximum amount of pain for this market is going to be when people sell at 100K and watch <laughs> it double again. Like they're, yeah. they're going to get, there's going to be a whiff. by Godzilla for sure. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's all anecdotal, but I could see it playing out that way uh, pretty easily. I don't think it's going to make a dent in the ultimately in the price, because here's the thing. If, even if people like Gareth Soloway tried to short it, or even if, you know, somebody buys it and they try to like, get out, it doesn't matter. You got, you got this horde this barbarian horde that's moving into this thing. Right. And every single thing, all, the same reason you, all three of us have gotten into Bitcoin the average American can get that, right? And, and they're like, wait a second. You're giving out these new lottery tickets that are going to go up 10x. Okay, great. Um, what's the catch? Oh, there is no catch. Hmm. Yeah, I ca I'd like three of those lottery tickets, please. Uh, I'm <laughs> gonna and actually, my friend would like two, you know. Oh, there's only 21 million lottery tickets? That's it? There's only 20 million? What? Can't you make more? No? Okay. So 
Like it, 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 to me, we are about to see that right now. And I don't think we've ever done it. And I think everybody who's looking at this from a point of view of charts or cycles, it, I, I would say not zoom out, but like forget what you throw everything you have learned out the window because it doesn't, it no longer applies because everything that happened in 2017, 2018, okay, let's, let's go, let's go first of all, back to who was the driving force between 2017, 2018, where was the money coming from? I'll tell you where the money is coming from. ICOs, right? That's yep. what happened, right? Because people are like, Hey, you got this project. You can put money on this project and go up, right? Mm. And Ethereum was, you know, the first, one of the first ICOs, right? But then there was all these ICOs on Ethereum, right? So everybody's like plunking money there. That was the first driver. The second driver was all these people saying, I can get you 10% return on your stable coin. That was it. Like other, you had Sailor pushing Bitcoin, but it was really that that was not the narrative of the 2020 bull market, right? It wasn't really Bitcoin, you know? It really was about, you know, it was about yield, right? In a world in which we had 0% yield, yeah. everybody was like, how would you like to earn 10% on just by parking your Bitcoin with Celsius? <laughs> how would you like to earn 20% by parking your, changing it into this, you know, Terra stable coin and, uh, you can get 20% a month risk-free. That was the, the thing. So this is the first cycle. The first cycle is really going to be about Bitcoin, I think. Mm. And mm. I think it's the scarcity thing is going to be front and center. It's going to be these 21 million. It's a scarcity thing. And the, I think the only thing that could kind of somewhat derail that is if this ETH, ETH, ETF starts happening. Right. Yeah. Do you, that, do you yeah. foresee that? I really do not. Okay. I'm, I, I think that if they open up that, if they open up that wedge, right. Um, that door is going to get gapped pretty wide. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of people that want to want to spot at the trough. If they do that. I mean, what what's next Solana, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, polygon, you know, like I, I, I just think, at that point, you know, Gary Gensler, he's got some, you know, some splaining to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what what were you thinking? Now, right now, he can sort of say, I carved up this thing. I okayed ETS for this. Bitcoin is not a security. It's clear. And we have an ETF. He opens the door for ETH ETFs. I, I don't know. I think that, and I think it would be a very detrimental for Bitcoin, too, in the story. But I... I honestly do not think that's happening this year at all. What is up, folks? It's Dan here, and I'm going to take just a quick moment to talk to you about where Josh and I buy our Bitcoin, and that is at Swan Bitcoin. The two of us have now been dollar cost averaging on Swan for years, and here's why. It's user-friendly. The fees are low and transparent. Withdrawals are absolutely free. They offer attentive expert service, and Swan has a full suite of financial services, including an IRA product where you can roll a traditional or a Roth IRA into Bitcoin, Swan Private for high net worth individuals, and coming soon, Swan Vault for collaborative custody. In our view, Swan just gets it. They're focused on Bitcoin only. They provide really solid and ongoing education, and they strongly encourage self-custody. Maybe most importantly, it's low friction. Setting up and accessing a Swan account is so easy that it's boomer and firefighter proof. Keep that stack thick. That's T-H-I-C, no K at the end, at swan.com. I hope it's not happening next year. And if we get two full years without it happening, it will not matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. So, so. so not, another one here, we, we talked earlier about how recent news, at least leading up to when we're recording this, Merrill, Bank of America, Wells Fargo stepping in. You've got all the other big players we know of, BlackRock, Fidelity. Huh. What, do you, what do you think? You, you sent a tweet, I think it was today, or maybe it was yesterday. We're, we're now in an environment of, in terms of household names where people's brokerage and retirement accounts are, Vanguard's really the only the only person uh, outside the playground with their arms yeah. crossed pouting. Uh, how do you think they're going to respond? What are, what are they going to do? Uh, they're obviously a, a big bully on that playground. Uh, what, I, I do uh, not how do you think they're going to deal with this? I don't think they're going to, uh, they, will, they will not accept a Bitcoin ETF. 
for the for the foreseeable future. You just think and, they're 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 they have their segment carved out. It's not going anywhere. And well, it's sort of you know, it, you know the way that Bitcoiners are kind of religious about Bitcoin. You know, Vanguard is religious about uh, what Vanguard really did. And you know, I read I read there's a the um, let me see if I have it here. One second. Talking about Bogle's book. This book. This Little book. book of- yeah, the Bogle effect, right? Okay, yeah. And this is a book about John Bogle, who created Vanguard and yep. created this thing. These guys are not in it for the money, as crazy as that sounds. You know, they basically are kind of religious. They're religious uh, of, in their own right, and they say what you should be doing as Americans is betting on American, uh, on America, right? How do you bet on America? You own the S and P 500 and you shut up. Okay. And that's kind of, that's what they sort of believe. Right. And so they basically instill this religion of you will own the S and P 500. You will never trade this thing. They have a, a, their turnover is like, I don't know, 1% a year or something. It's ridiculous. Right. So you will never take it. And we will give you the absolute lowest fees known to mankind. In fact, we, we're going to run our thing like a co-op. So, you know, any, any extra fees that we revenue we have, we'll just pass it back to you. We'll just lower the fees. We're not even in it for the money. Right. So that's, that's the spirit of anger. Once you understand that the way these guys are thinking, they're not liable to start really coming out with a Vanguard uh, Bitcoin product soon. Now, Bitcoin goes to half a million, a million, does Vanguard sort of change their tune? Maybe, probably. You know what I mean? But they're they're not they're not quite as uh, mercenary as kind of you know like Goldman Sachs. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, they're going to be Gold, Goldman Sachs is sort of like you have Darth Vader here, and then you have <laughs> Goldman Sachs here, right? And they both have the same sort of general sense of ethics. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Yeah. So Vanguard is the Amish guy working on the farm and Goldman Sachs is Darth Vader. Got it. Pretty much. You got that's pretty much that's a pretty good analysis. Yeah. Where's Peter I mean, Schiff on that spectrum? <laughs> I mean, it Peter Peter Schiff is I mean, I, I tweet about him sometimes because he is so lost right now in terms of his narrative. That it it's almost like he's uh it's it's almost like he's it's 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 like a parody of himself at this point, you know. <laughs> so he, he he noticed the other day, he goes, Well, the problem is Bitcoin's going up, these people are selling they're selling gold to buy Bitcoin. Hmm. What's gonna happen now? Well, Bitcoin's clearly gonna go to zero, right? Because it's worthless. And therefore, all the money that was taken out of gold is gonna go to zero with Bitcoin. Ooh, and then that's going to have to reverse because people are going to say, I don't want to go down with Bitcoin. So this is going to reverse. And now those same people are going to be buying uh, gold. Oh, but they won't have any money to buy gold with now because all their money is going to be obliterated. Right. So who's going to buy gold? Oh, somebody else is going to buy gold. I, they don't. People can well, talk themselves into literally anything with the right um, incentive yeah. structure, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally, Josh. And when your identity is attached to a narrative, and we can all think of things in our own life. I've gotten over attached to ideas or projects or whatever. And I have, I just suddenly you wake up and you go, holy shit, my pride has gotten in the way of my mind. And it's really hard to walk back, especially in such a public forum. I mean, he's been so overtly vocal about his position on this. It's, it's almost unrealistic to expect a mere mortal to walk that back. Well, um, look, and I, I will say this, it's, Bitcoin has no fair price, right? So if you look at the price of, you know, real estate in Chicago or something, you can you can make some estimate of the rental value of the property. You know, if you look at a company, you can sort of say, what what are the future earnings look like over the next 10, 20, 30 years, right? And you can make some estimate, right? You may not be right, but you won't be right, but you can make some idea. But Bitcoin, it's really hard to look at Bitcoin and say, okay, well, I think, 
I think 100,000 is a good price for Bitcoin or a million or 10 million, right? And because it just doesn't have that thing, uh, I think some people, some people will, they won't really be willing to accept the fact that it could go really a lot higher. Okay. Mm, yeah. It's, it's only going to be supply and demand. There is no fair, whatever, you know, the fair price for Bitcoin is whatever somebody will pay for Bitcoin. Right. And I would say, you know, what price should you sell Bitcoin at? I, you know, <laughs> I don't think you should sell Bitcoin necessarily, but I mean, if you want to buy something, it's really a function of your personal situation. Right. You know, if you're, if all of a sudden you're in a position because of your Bitcoin that you can get something you've always wanted and yeah, maybe it'll go higher, but maybe it's, maybe that now is a good time to, 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 to let some of that go. And, 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 and you know, life is not finite. Life is not infinite either. You no, know what I mean? 100%. So, so, you know, you might, you, it's not who gets the most Bitcoin when they die. That's not, you don't get an award for that. Right. Right. So, you know, I think that, you know, I think, I just think the next 10 years, the next, I think the next four years are going to be exceptionally interesting for Bitcoin. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think right now is this, it's a ridiculous time to even be thinking about like, because we're at the beginning of like, this is like the Oklahoma land rush, right? And yeah. uh, you know, it's like, you're, you're, you're right on the starting line and you're like, uh, maybe I don't, maybe I'll just, I'll just go, I'll just go back. Oh yeah. I get, I get the first territory that I want. No, no, no. <laughs> like the, this is it. This is, we are literally, this is, this is about to unfold over the next couple of years right now. So we're all in, if you, the good news is if you have Bitcoin, great. You probably are better off than 99.9% .9 of, of your peers, right? You, you just got lucky. I don't know how you guys got lucky by who you listened to, what conference you went to, you know, uh, whatever it is that gave you that idea to own it. I think, wow, con congratulate yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, just just try try not to hold, try not to sell it in the next two years. Yeah, right? yeah. Because we're we're there actually is something now that that wasn't present for the entire history of Bitcoin that just we're just about to see happen, and. Give yourself a little bit of, uh, you know, let let your uh, let your winnings uh, uh, run. You know, don't don't cut yourself off and 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 be too clever. Everybody's just too clever. They're all like, oh, I'll sell, I'll buy sure. back. It's just bad idea. You right. know. Yep. As so we say on here, stop taxes get... and all of that, like yeah. taxes really kneecap you when you, when it's you are going to get kneecap. You you're better off literally. I mean, literally just getting on podcasts and talking about it, <laughs> you know, a part of this for me too. look, like if I look at this thing every day and just, if I just stood at a screen, I'm just going to be like, oh my God. I mean, I'm making so much money in such a small period. Right. But, you know, if I tune back and I say, you know what, I could, we could, we could all lose, we could all lose a bunch of money on mark to market right now. And, you know, it wouldn't be the end of the thing. The main thing I want to see is we are seeing, this is the beginning of mainstream adoption, boys. This this is it. There's no no other actor. There's no sovereign nation, no company, nothing. None of that matters right now. This is it. You, you've seen it. That's it. Now we just have to see. We just have to wait. The only thing you need to do is wait a little bit and see how it takes off. And I can tell you, I feel like, this is going to be more like 2017 than anything else. This is going to be, a, I feel like this is like a 2017 type scenario, right? Not like a 2021 scenario. I think, I think it could go 10 X this year. We could, we could see half a million dollars Bitcoin in 2024. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but you know, if we get to a hundred thousand, we can get to 200,000. We can get to 400,000. Those things can happen. Boom, 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 you know? And yeah. without like, new technology, new wallets, nothing, nothing. We, we don't need anything. We just need what we already got. Yeah. Let, yeah. Let's play out the, let's play out the yeah. bearish case as we yeah. close. Uh, if yeah. you're wrong on, on your bullish sentiments and we're, we talk this time next year and the price is lower than it is today. Why? Yeah. What, what, what's walk, walk us through that thought process. 
Well, I think it's very unlikely, but I think that what could happen is um, either Biden gets reelected and they pass some kind of legislation on, um, on, you know, anti-Bitcoin, like, you know, for example, you can't mine Bitcoin without, you know, blah, 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 you know, uh, ESG thingamajig or, right. or I see Trump getting elected and he was kind of pro Bitcoin, but he wasn't a hundred percent pro Bitcoin. Right. And all of a sudden Bitcoin's going up a little bit too much and he doesn't own enough of it. And he owns a lot of real estate and he sort of figures, wait a second, this thing is not good for <laughs> my white house. Mm. Okay. So I think the biggest danger is the government. That's your biggest danger right now. The adoption's going to happen. We got everything. That's going to happen. The government could totally, could totally screw you. Yeah. It gets a so, lot more difficult for them to do anything about it after this ETF structure has been approved, though, correct? I, I think it's going to be really hard, right? And also, the other thing is, you know, as if we get to a lot of people own Bitcoin, those guys are going to be voting, too. Right. For sure. <laughs> so, you know, if, if you're, if most of your retirement plan is based on the idea of Bitcoin going up, you're not really going to be super keen on, uh, on, uh, any kind of government policy that looks to, uh, to cut that down. Right. I don't know. Like, that's what I think. So I think this thing could be really, really good for like, you know, everybody's like, how do we get, how do we get more senators and congressmen, and everything pro Bitcoin? Well, you get them in so that they're, <laughs> they're, you know, that they're the people who vote for them and themselves, they, they're all, they're all Bitcoiners. Right. Yep. And now they're, now they'll be like, yeah, well, you know, of course we're, you know, we're going to allow Bitcoin. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think that, I think this thing could dramatically change in the next couple of years. And as long, as long as we don't get some, you know, black swan on the legislative side now look could there be a stock market crash too yeah there could you know there probably will be some form of it right at some point um but you know if if they do do that then there'll probably be a pretty sizable interest rate reduction uh after that and that's pretty good for bitcoin although you know listen this the my my view on this macro stuff is it, it doesn't really matter, right? Bitcoin's going to do well, regardless of the macro environment. It, it really doesn't matter. It's just, <clears> the game. this is like a game theory thing. They said, we got these 21 million things and they're, they're only 21 million. You can get them now. You want one, they're probably going to go up. It's sort of like, and you can send them to yourself as money. Okay. That thing does well in every single economy, you know, and it's just going to grow. So I don't think the, I don't think macro is that important here. I really don't. And so I think the risks on macro are probably less important too. And I think also if stock market goes down and Bitcoin doesn't go down, a lot of yeah. people are going to go, mm. a lot of people are going, Hey honey, my stock market's doing well. How about you? Well, you know, that Bitcoin that I bought, that's doing really well too. That's doing well. The stock market's crashed, but the Bitcoin stuff's doing great. Hey, maybe we should just move all of the stuff out of the stocks and into the Bitcoin stuff. Yeah, let's do that. You know, so I it can that could be a double edged sword, right? Uh, where the, actually pe people just start liking it. So listen, I obviously I'm super super bullish, and um, this yeah. episode was was bullish with watermelon sized testicles and a water main sized cock. I mean, this was one of the most bullish. <laughs> <laughs> bullish episodes we've ever had but you know what i mean you gotta I call us you guys, call like, a you guys buy my narrative or, or yeah roughly? i mean I, I was about to say you gotta call sense. a spade a spade and i think one of the most powerful themes you hit on in here we are very high on self-custody by the way like i i yeah. do think it's doable for a lot of people but we're also realists fred and we understand how insulated we are in this community, how much experience we have with it, how long we've been at it, and how hard it is More for a lot of people. people are and, going and being to get able to click a button is yeah, a you know big what? That's deal. that's sort of your first step too, right? Everybody's got to learn somehow, right? But if your first step 
is you own a bunch of Bitcoin in an ETF and it's gone up, it's doubled, you know? Yeah. You know what? You kind of might want to understand what is it that you bought? And somebody right. says, here's a wallet and you can use it and you can self-custody it and you can just send it to people. You're like, well, that's pretty cool. I already own the ETF, but that like to do that. That sounds pretty good, right? Mm, yeah. So I definitely think the ETF is not going to take away from that. We've, ETF is going to massively increase the interest in that. Math, not even a little bit. Massively, right? right? Yeah. Massively, you know? It's massively going to increase the... Uh, the interest in it. So it, all this stuff is super good for the, every, everything that was ever said about Bitcoin pre ETF. It's all good. It's all good. It's not, doesn't hurt. Right. And that's why I'm saying, you know, initially when I I sort of did this, you know, like my friends at Swan, like Corey was like, what are you, what are you doing for it? What are you doing? And then, and then, then I, you know, he's like, Fred, maybe you want to come over to Swan and talk to people. And I did. And they were like, Oh my God, this is great. Like, this is actually going to be really good for us, you know? And I'm like, yeah, it is. You know, this is, this is, this is everything we've ever tried to do in terms of trying to onboard people, self custody, and everything else. It's going to make it a thousand times easier. A thousand times. It's going to be so much better. And I guarantee you, a year from now, you're going to walk out and your average. <laughs> Your average, uh, you know, a suburban party in in Chicago, and ha- more than fifty percent of the people you know are going to own Bitcoin. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I believe. You know what I mean? It's just like right now you walk out, and how many how many people do you know own Apple in their IRA? Yeah, everybody. Everybody. Right? Yep. Everybody owns Apple. Everybody owns Google. You know what I mean? You know, you're getting a you're getting a decent amount of people own NVIDIA now, right? But like what I'm just saying is like that's just a normal everyday Americana thing now, right? It's to own NVIDIA. You know, and guess what? A normal everyday Americana kind of thing is to own Bitcoin a year from now. Mm. That's what's gonna happen, right? And then then they're gonna want to know everything you can be about it. They're gonna want to go dive into Satoshi, who he was, blah, blah, blah. Yep. By the way, if I could plug one thing, and my friend uh, Benobi has done some amazing uh, research on the on these Satoshi papers. So if you ever you want to want to dive in a little bit to kind of the origin story of Bitcoin, he's yeah. your guy. A lot we'll of link, stuff. We'll on, that. Yeah, I, I actually it. read yeah. I read I read those tweets of yours and and went a little yeah. bit into that. We'll throw that down in the notes. That's yeah. a that's an oh, interesting perfect. rabbit hole for sure. Yeah. Fred, it's give a us a handoff hole, to right. yourself uh, where people can find you and what you're up to. Just on Twitter, um, yeah. Listen, I mean, I, I'm I'm an investor, right? So, what I'm mainly, I mean, I'm 98 percent in in Bitcoin, right? That's that's my in, in terms of crypto type things, right? Yeah, I do, have some, I do own some stocks and, and, and other stuff, but um, the other thing that I'm kind of my I'm very interested in is, is sort of Bitcoin level twos, layer twos and stuff like that. So that's another area where, you know, it's, that's a whole episode in itself, but that, that's where I think you know, once we get to the point of everybody accepts that this thing is great and we all want to own Bitcoin, which is like, we first have to get there. Like we have to, we have to all first want to own it and get it. And the second thing and, and self custody, right? And then the second thing is, how do we make it super, super usable, right? So that's Lightning, that's Layer 2s, that's everything else, you know, better wallets and everything else. And, uh, you know, and, and that is that is a, a serious interest of mine, right? So and it's not just, it's, it's something that I've been tooling away with, you know, and investing in for, for a couple of years now. So, so those, are my, those are my general areas. It's all Bitcoin, but, you know, it's Bitcoin and kind of the future of layer twos on Bitcoin and everything. That That's really kind of what I'm interested in. And uh, yeah, just follow me on Twitter and you can hit me up. I'm pretty accessible. Uh, you know, if, if you want to, uh, if you just want to, you know, talk shit on Twitter, I'm, I'm happy to <laughs> sling some shit with you on Twitter. Yeah, we, we like talking Gorgeous. shit. We like talking shit. That's for sure. This was, uh, uh, there's a lot to process from this one, man. It, in a lot of ways, this was uh... it's really simple, though. What I, I would say is my my message is really simple. Just like if I could percolate it down is mass market is all about ease of use and 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 opening up truly to anybody. And that's happened. We don't have to wait. There's no 
what about this? What about this? What about, we don't. This is now it's happened. And I think I think I think we can really expect some great things and just be patient, you know. And you know, from here is like you've gotten some we've got some pretty good price movement so far. Yeah, maybe it gives up 10% for whatever reason. I, yeah, who knows, right? I I don't care. Like just back off and just like you know, yeah. this thing is not going to be a complete straight line up. You know, we know no. that, right? We know that, right? Mm-hmm. But, you know, get the conviction that the stuff that I'm saying <laughs> kind of makes sense. If if it does make sense, get your personal conviction, right? And then, and and don't get, don't try to like just say, oh, I'm going to keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. No, just think about it like as a two-year trade. Yeah. Yep. I sort of tell people, I would rather you not focus on when should I sell in terms of level, but maybe when can you sell in terms of time, mm. you know, maybe think two years from now, three, maybe three years from now might be a good point to start thinking about selling, but do not even think about it in 2024. Just put, you know, st- no sell button in 2024. That does not exist. Right. Yeah. I guess you know, probably- you're going to go up, you're going to go down, whatever, but don't sell right now. That's what I would say. And again, I can't, I'm not a financial advisor, you know, I'm not, and I, I don't make any money off of any of this stuff. And I'm not, I'm not here to make money off of any of this stuff. I'm here to be part of the community and, uh, you know, don't insult me either. You know, like, it's like, I'll block you, you know, but like, you know, but I'm, you know, that's it. That's, I just, I just, am interested in being part of the community and learning, you know, there's a lot of cool people and cool projects and everything else and great information. I, and, and part of the great thing I love, and I'm sure you guys see it too, is you see, because you guys are really part of this Bitcoin community, you get all these people telling you stuff, right? And you learn stuff, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you're, you're kind of a node, you know, you're, you're a processing node in this Bitcoin network, right? So, you know, now I got these people like feeding me stuff on DMs, like, you know, hey, there's this that's happening, you know, and I'm like, ooh. So this is a this is a nice little side benefit of for you sure. Know, you get to uh, rub shoulders with some incredibly intelligent, well researched, thoughtful human yeah, beings. Yeah, we all kind of learn from each other, right? And what I'm saying is, it's good to get on the inside track of this info, right? And it gives you more conviction. You know, uh, I'm not saying a trading signal because I don't think you should be trading this stuff at all. So you know, I don't trade it. Just hold, hodl it. That's it. Great wise advice. words okay. wise words appreciate All you right, Fred. Guys. enjoyed this yeah thank you and if i'm uh if, if i'm ever in chicago maybe i'll look you guys up maybe we'll get a you know a brewski somewhere yeah, absolutely on, uh, yeah hit us like up. Michigan. we're never averse to a craft beer with a bitcoiner so hit us <laughs> up all right guys thank you very thanks, much Fred. guys thanks, really enjoyed Fred. it thanks appreciate bye. you bye <laughs>